Okay, so in this tutorial we're going to talk about how to write to files. So to begin with, I actually have some code here. You can see that I've got a couple of variables here, one for frequency and one for duration. I ask the user to enter a frequency and I read that in as an int. I do the same thing here for the duration in milliseconds and then I read that in as well. And then we do a console.beep of the frequency and the duration. So if we were to go ahead and run this, I could enter a frequency, let's say 1000 hertz, and we'll do it for 1000 milliseconds. And I could do the same thing here, 2000 hertz for 1000 milliseconds. And I can stop by entering in negative one. So it looks like the program works, but what if I wanted to write this information out to file? For example, what if I wanted to write the frequency out followed by a comma, followed by the duration, and to have the frequency and duration each on its own line? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So to begin with, I'll come up here and we'll include a new using statement using system IO and I'll bring to life a stream writer and I'll call it SW and we have a couple of different ways that we can create a stream writer. You can see that we actually have seven. Probably the easiest way to create a stream writer is just to pass it the name of the file that you want to write to. So we can write here to song.txt and that looks good. Realize that there's another way that we could have created this. I could have passed it a boolean. In fact, that's the fourth constructor. And that's whether or not to append to the file. So if we pass true here, it would append to the file every time we opened that file. So this would be good if you were trying to create a log file or keep some kind of history around. Realize that if we had passed false, it would actually have wiped that file out and then begin writing at the beginning of that file. Okay, so we'll leave that option alone for now. I can drop down right below console.beep and I can say sw.writeline the frequency plus a comma plus the duration. So you can see that SW is actually going to behave a lot like console in the sense that you can write and write line. Okay, if we were to run the program in this state, we'll enter in a couple of frequencies, let's say 500, 1000, 1000, 1000, and 2000, 1000, followed by a negative one. You can see that the program ends and then it returns back here to the editor. So the question is, where did it write that information to? If I look over here in my solution explorer, I don't see anything with regard to song.txt. So actually what we'll do is we'll come over here to open file and we'll look here in the bin directory and then debug and you can see that song.txt is there but its file size is actually zero. If I were to open this by double clicking on it, you could see that song.txt is actually empty. So the question is, what happened? If I were to come down here, you can see that I've done my write line. As always, let's try to visualize what's going on. So imagine that we have some code that looks like this. I have a stream writer called SW, very similar to what we have, and it's hooked up to a file called my.txt. I have a loop here that iterates five times, and on the inside I have an SW.write line of hello world. So what's actually going on is we have a buffer that it writes that information into. So you can see hello world here is transferred into this buffer. We can do this any number of times, and by the time we reach the end of this loop, you can see that the buffer still isn't full, so it's not going to push that information out to the file. The reason this happens is because it's way more efficient to write large chunks of data out to disk. So in this case, the buffer's not full, and therefore the data isn't being moved over. So you may be asking if there's a way to force this buffer to push the information out to disk, and there is. If we include an sw.flush, we're telling the computer that regardless of whether or not that buffer's full, we want to go ahead and move the data onto disk. In this case, all of these hello world will get written to my.txt. So let's head back over to our code. So looking at the code, there's two different places that I could put this flush. I could put it right here, meaning that I would flush every single time through this loop, or I could take it out and put it here after the loop, meaning that once the loop's completed, we can go ahead and flush the stream. The last thing that you'll always want to do is to close the stream when you're done with it. And essentially this returns the file back to the operating system so that other applications can access it. Okay, if we were to go ahead and run this code, we'll do a couple of frequencies here. So we'll do 1500 for 1000. We'll do 3000 for 1000. And let's do 4000 for 500 followed by negative one. And if we go to file open, again, it's gonna be in the bin debug, and then you should see song.txt, and if I double click on that, you should see that we have our comma separated values. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you understand a bit more about how to write to files.